Good evening and welcome to Quickie Man's Global Cooking Challenge. Uh, welcome to night three of country number 169. Tonight we are cooking the food of Syria. Uh, this is the Global Cooking Challenge where uh, over a period of about four years we are yeah. learning to cook by cooking a different country in alphabetical order, working our way around the world through all 193 UN member states. Tonight we're cooking the food of Syria. We're making a kibbe bil sene and fateh. Uh, the kibbe is uh, sort of like a meat cake um, and the fat, uh, with a bulgur wheat and the fate is a chickpea appetizer. Uh, in case you didn't already know, uh, considering the sad situation of the country at the present. During the Syria is located on the Mediterranean, right there, uh, between Iraq and Jordan and the Mediterranean and Lebanon and Turkey. And uh, it's in a bad situation right now. And we're going to try to focus on the good times here. Uh, Yolanda, thank you for the restream. Let's find. There we are. Get my lens on. And we will get moving. Started a little bit early today uh, because I figured timing wise it's going to take me a little while to uh, figure one thing out. Because uh, for this I had to start the night before, which I just love to do, um, by soaking uh, my chickpeas here and the bulgur wheat, which has kind of outgrown the bowl back there. Uh, and I didn't have a, imagine I didn't have a stream last night of me just sticking stuff in a bowl because I didn't think that would be terribly exciting. Uh, so let me try to get this sucker at a landing point. Thank you for the restream. Uh, okay, get you some juice here. And uh, Toby, thank you for the restream. Okay, and again, sorry about the lighting situation there. So, starting the kibbe, I actually have to start by prepping my chickpeas uh, first, which is, um, hi, hi Toby, how you doing? Okay, so we've got our chickpeas over here, which have been soaking since last night. Um, I read that uh, one cup of dried chickpeas equals four cups of not dried chickpeas, so I didn't take that many chickpeas. Uh, let me clean this off here. These are magic lily pads. Uh, I get nothing for endorsing them, but I love them. By Charles Vianson. They are silicone, don't accept imitations. They are simple like that. They just go on, and they're just like that. So they're pretty damn cool. And I gotta wash it again. Uh, you can buy them from their website. Just Google Charles Viancin, B I A N C I N, and you should find it. I am good, thanks. Uh, where are people watching this from? Uh, I, I see Derek there, he's from Scotland. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I just happened to download a song uh, from either 40 or 50 years ago. And the group is called the the Band of the Black Watch. Um, I remembered if I looked at my if my wrist, I would remember the name, the Band of the Black Watch, and it's like a Scottish bagpipey thing. Um, it was kind of okay. It actually, you know, mildly hit the charts at some point, either forty or fifty years ago. I didn't know if you were familiar. So. Uh, we're going to drain our chickpeas and we have to boil them in some water. I'm going to need a lot of pots and pans this evening for a number of things and a number of reasons. So might as well get those out now. I'm going to use every burger in the house, but maybe not simultaneously. So, uh, Derek, hey, thanks for liking the stream. Okay, so let's drain this puppy. Good evening, Derek. Good evening to you. So we got our chickpeas going in the pot. And let me dump this. 
Okay, I'm limping my, I did another 10 miles today and my tendon hurts. Uh, okay, uh, let's move you over to the stove for a moment. Mm. So this is gonna get covered with two inches of water. Am I right? Yeah, I'm, I'm right. Uh, oh, here, yes, two inches of water. Um, so here we go. So that's gonna have to cook. I don't know, two inches. Again, I'm very bad with um, measurements. Well, that looks like it's at least two inches. So I'm gonna stick that back there. and get that to boil and then to simmer down. Uh, let me get a picture of that. Pictures are for the blog. Everything is located at cliffyland.com. You'll find pictures, links to the original recipes, links to these videos, kind of uh, reviews of how things went, and information about the countries. And you can catch up on the ones that you missed because this is country number 169. And so if you're new, you've missed 168 of them already. But don't worry. Uh, as the years go by, we will move on uh, and do uh, other stuff. Worry not, in case you were. Okay, uh, quickly, uh, we're gonna add some stuff to that. I'm gonna stick it in here uh, just for the moment um, while that's coming to a boil. And that is... Two, I need the trash. Trashy trash. Okay. Uh, four are chickpeas. Uh, and I could have gotten them canned, but I didn't want to get canned. Um, I figured go, you know, deal with the whole soaking that I can't stand. Okay. So for this, I'm gonna grab two garlic cloves and since I don't want to make a huge mess. I've got some cheesecloth here too. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Come on. And we're listening to Syrian folk music in case you couldn't tell. So how are you doing Derek? How are you today? Okay, trash. So we're gonna take our two peeled garlic cloves. Uh, I don't really need to take the ends off. But, uh, I'm going to stick those in this bowl just for a moment uh, because to that we are going to be adding um, a half of a peeled yellow onion. Uh, since I don't feel like having a half a, a yellow onion sitting around, uh, I'm going to take a whole yellow onion and stick it in. Uh, this is just going to be to add flavor to the uh, chickpeas. So in fact, I can lose that whole top layer. Okay. And trashy trash. I have something to show you people later too, but uh, when we get a critical mass going, I will show it off. Because I saw the weirdest thing today. And I took a picture. Uh, I'm good today. I'm finishing work at a reasonable time uh, uh, tomorrow and then off for two days. Good for you. Relaxation time. Relax. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter whether this is perfectly peeled or not. Uh, let me dump this here away with me. Okay. And uh, to that, uh, we're adding a, finding a dry the chipotle pepper. Um, Emril, thank you for the like. I hope I, 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 no, I didn't get your name right. Okay, I'm looking for a dried uh, pepper of some kind. Um, I have a wide variety to choose from. It's a dried chipotle pepper. Uh, I was not going to go out and get uh, dried peppers, specific dried peppers, just for this small, you know optional uh, thing. We got a New Mexico chili. Uh, we've got uh, chile ancho. 
and uh, chili pasilla and chili guajillo uh, um, mm -mm, decisions decisions I, I'm not that familiar with the different flavors so I'm just gonna go with the New Mexico chili are you off to Hollywood Frankie relax <laughs> oh dear god did you uh, ever hear of a show from the 90s I think it was from the 90s called bands reunited uh, where they um, sort of ambushed uh, different bands uh, who had broken up and then you know got them to you know agree to a reunion uh, uh, you know first to sit down chat about you know why they broke up and then a reunion and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't sometimes um, they had to abort the process halfway in but with Frankie Goes to Hollywood it was hysterical because they got Holly Johnson to come and with his old dog and sat down, they got the guy with a mustache to fly in all the way from a sheep farm in New Zealand. And there was an audience waiting to hear them downstairs. And after the chat, he said, uh, Holly Johnson said, mm, I don't think I'm going to do it. And left, a, left, left everyone hanging. That was very awkward. Okay, um, what else am I adding to this? Uh, dry chip, that's it. So we're gonna take all these uh, three ingredients, the uh, the pepper, in this case a New Mexico chili pepper, garlic cloves, and uh, a peeled onion. I'm gonna wrap it in this cheesecloth here. And uh, I need to find me another rubber band. I'll be right back. Down the drive back. Don't go away, don't go away. Trying to ward off the copyright gods there. Okay, the reason I'm wrapping this in a in cheesecloth is so I can pull it out later. So, uh -uh. I should have saved the rubber band from last time. Okay. Alrighty, Roo. This is going into that pot over there. Wish me luck. Okay, so that's gonna boil and then it's gonna simmer uh, for about an hour and a half. So till 7.30, which is about the time that I'm gonna need it, which is good. So, we can move on uh, with the rest of what we're doing. I don't need you. And, Still dehydrated from my run. So, um, uh, since, uh, well, let me keep going. Okay, so uh, we've got our chickpeas prepped, and I need to make sure, yell if you see that starting to boil behind my, over my shoulder, because I need to turn that down. Uh, but meanwhile, I need to start prepping some stuff. So, uh, let me clean this out. Okay, so for our chickpeas, we're gonna need three garlic cloves. Three more garlic cloves. It's gonna be a lot of this stuff. Not a lot of chopping, yes, a lot of prepping. So, let's, what, what do we have in the way of garlic cloves? Oh, so quiet. Okay, uh, for this kibbe, uh, I was wondering, I mentioned last time that, uh, about uh, the kibbeh and how I thought that was odd in that not only did I have one recipe totally unrelated that used that word, um, I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't anything like this, but uh, I'm familiar with the actual dish uh, because I've had it at Middle Eastern restaurants and then it is a raw meat that is uh, spiced and served tartare, which is usually only there on um, you know days where you know, someone's, the expert is there to prepare it, shall we say. Um, this is not raw. This is cooked. And apparently, um, that's okay. 
Uh, so, like a, uh, so what we're doing, we're doing two dishes today. Hello, uh, billiard guy. Uh, we're doing a kibbit bill sunnier, which is a minced lamb with bulgur wheat. So like a meat cake. Um, and then we're doing, uh, on the back, we're doing uh, uh, fateh, or fate, uh, which is a pita with chickpeas and yogurt. So we're doing two dishes. So we're doing prep right now. So for this, we peel and... Uh, Mints the two onions. Hopefully this garlic is still good. This one, nuts. Yeah, it's on the edge. Okay. And so uh, the uh, kibbe, this recipe, uh, which uh, is a Syrian recipe uh, obtained via a. Um, an Australian site of all things, uh, but from a Syrian uh, chef or cook, um, there's a video of her preparing it also, which of course is a lot shorter than this is gonna be, because it's live. Live, we're gonna do it live. Um, the uh, thing about it though, is that I kind of freaked out when I saw the volume of certain ingredients in this dish. Uh, because uh, it, well, first off it was in metric, so I had to convert it. Uh, and then I went, wow, that's a crazy amount of food. Like way, way, way more. Um, uh, I think it would wind up being like three and a half pounds of meat uh, for two people. That's a bit much. So I am hoping, 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 hoping that cutting uh, at least the volume stuff in half, I'm going to try to leave the flavor stuff intact. and. Hope that won't be a problem. But I'm hoping A, it'll work, and B, um, in terms of the vessel in which I'm cooking it, in which I am cooking, uh, it will fit. Or, it, well, not that it'll fit, but it won't, you know, be too small. Uh, because it's looking for a, uh, hey, Arsenal lover, thank you for liking the restream. Jessica, thank you for liking the restream. Uh, hello, 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 Arsenal lover. Uh, hello, sorry about the wobble. Okay, now we miss. There's a joke there. Um, okay. Um, so, yes, it's like a meat cake of sorts. It's like a meat layer cake. Um, it called for was it? Uh, I forgot the number. Like 400 grams or what, whatever it turned out to be. Um, we'll see in a minute. Yeah, it called for 800 grams of lamb for one part and 800 grams of lamb for the other, which worked out to me to be about three pounds. And we're not eating that much meat, so I just cut it in half and ho am hoping for the best. Nice glasses. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Um, getting progressively blinder, so uh, I've kind of opted to wear the glasses whenever I'm not running and just use my contacts for running. In fact, the contacts are like these progressive things, which means you can't really see well far and you can't really see well close, you can't really see well medium, but you kind of can see. Um, but I use them when I'm running and I just kind of make out shapes in the distance as I'm running towards them and then go like, get out of my way! Hey, 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 Anne Marie, how you doing? We've got minced garlic. Okay, so that is for the, I need to, a pen for this. Uh, okay, uh, for the chickpeas, mincing the three garlic cloves. Okay, so that's for Mr. Chickpeas. So I'm gonna put that over on this side here. Cause that comes later. Uh, for the chickpea dressing, we're gonna chop some cilantro and set that aside. So give me a second. I know it's like towards the end, but I'm gonna get all my, and I know the herbs are better chopped, you know, closer to when you're gonna serve them. Uh, but I don't care. No. Uh, I washed this earlier. Oh, incidentally, um, if you saw on Sunday, uh, made a, um, this stuff, zucchini, and uh, the zucchini stuff with lamb meat and stuff, and I said I only was gonna do half, cause only half, you know, cause A, it was two of us, and figured that only half would fit. 
in, in, the, in the skillet, which is true. So uh, what happened was that it tasted okay. The husband liked it. Um, I thought it really needed salt. I mean, like a ton more salt. And he's really so averse to salt at this point. You know, um, he's like, oh, it's blood pressure, so on and so forth. So, <sighs> so I had to add more salt, and I was disappointed in that. Um, and I had the leftover uh, lamb filling, because I did the whole amount of the lamb filling, knowing that I'd have more than I would need. So I had it sitting around. Uh, Danny, thank you for the restream. Uh, James, blind running, watch out for that tree. Cops, of course, flat, yes. Hey, Lydia, how you doing? Good seeing you. I was enjoying your show this morning. Uh, uh, I gotta be on the lookout. I have a friend of mine who, um, you know, has done different things, Kickstarter kind of things, um, but he's not in the middle of one now that I know of. But if he does, I will send information your way for your Tech Tuesdays. Anywho, um, yeah, blind. Uh, Trollo. Trollo? Trollolo. Um, anyway, uh, blind running, yes. No, so I'm thinking if I get my contacts, uh, next time, uh, maybe I'll just get them for distance. Uh, so at least I'll be able to see what's running. But then when I go to look at my watch to know what my, um, pace is, I'm gonna be like, ah! Trade-offs. Uh, Trollo. Uh, uh, Martin, uh, te la comes toda, uh, okay, en mano, algo está mal contigo. Um, Danny says hi to Lydia. Okay. Anyway. Oh, so, okay, now that I have my hands clean. Uh, well, I was running today. I'm talking about running. Okay, so I live in, like, the weirdest place in Florida, and I see weird stuff. And normally when I see weird stuff when I'm running, you know, I'm busy running. I can't stop and take a picture. But this time, I stopped. Everything I was doing, I pulled out the thing, and I took a picture. We'll see if you can see what it is. Can you identify what that is? I'll, 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 I'll let you take a guess. While I chop my cilantro. Oh, I should use my um, mezzaluna for this. That's what it's for. So see if you can identify what is in that picture. You tell me. While I chop. Anybody? Anybody? I know there's a delay on Meerkat, so... But I want people to guess what it is. Because I'm just that way. beach ball a globe pretty much it was a gigantic six foot tall we'll call it a beach ball that is a globe and these uh, two guys and a dog were rolling it you know up the, up the up the street along the beach and down 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 you go down goes Fraser So yes, so they, and apparently this gigantic six foot tall globe beach ball that they're rolling up the street, um, a friend of mine said that he saw it down in West Palm Beach yesterday, which uh, considering that south of here, I wonder if uh, these guys are on a trek all the way up the coast. It's a thing that a person could do. Oh my god, yeah, it was wacky. And everyone was stopping going, what is that? This is humongous. If there was a live photo, you'd see it rolling. My live photo thing doesn't really translate here on Meerkat. That live photo, you can take a picture and then, you know, you see the second before and after. So when I look at it on my phone, I see it rolling. It was crazy. Not like the time I saw, um, what was it? A pony? A small baby horse? With, uh, decked out in ribbons? 
with a little girl on top. Just popped out of the beach. Like, here, here's a horse. With a princess. Actually, I'm surprised it wasn't a unicorn. Well, you see all sorts of strange stuff on the beach, which is fun. Okay, so uh, we've got our, this for our, our uh, cilantro for our dressing, for the chickpeas, uh, which is coming later. Alrighty, and uh, so now we need to uh, chop two onions, which is going to be for the filling of said dish. Uh, so we're going to go through these onions right here. Yay. Okay. Mm -mm. And hopefully these are still okay. They seem okay. Good. Yay. Oh, this should go. needs to be cleaned. Excuse me. A man uh, drove by one time with a small calf in the back of the car. Sheesh. Like a live one? There's a picture, uh, there's a town, a city in Miami uh, called Hialeah, which uh, the town is legendary for a lot of things, a lot of very crazy things, um, and KC, of KC and the Sunshine Band. But uh, they are also a town with no zoning laws, and so there's a website called Only in Hialeah, and they had a picture, uh, which is around Christmas time, something that you kind of would expect to see there around Christmas time, but it's so weird to watch it. A guy in like a Mercedes, uh, a convertible, and in the passenger seat is like a dead pig, you know, like ready to be roasted. Yep, due to the horn too. <laughs> uh, he blinds, so the horse turned out to be a really big dog. Aha! Hey, Tammy, how you doing? Thank you for the uh, restream. Yeah, so I saw that. Um, uh, well, I didn't see the, the. I saw the picture of the uh, of the pig, um, but uh, myself, I saw. Uh, well, okay, I need to back up. This is going to sound like a total tangent. But, uh, back in the 80s, uh, T Tammy, hello, 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 and Marie, haha. -ha. Uh, back in the 80s, I watched a soap opera. I watched two soap operas, but, um, one I watched briefly was Another World. And, uh, there was this weird situation where this guy is trying to be friendly with his little, you know, young stepson, the stepson you know, doesn't want to be friends with him, and the stepson says, for Christmas he wants a flocked Christmas tree. A white flocked Christmas tree. Uh, Clifton, thank you for the restream. And so, you know, to, to get into the kid's good graces, um, he gets the white flocked Christmas tree. And then, you know, by the end of the episode, uh, something sparks a fire and it burns down the house and kills the guy. Um, and then there was the headline, you know, of like, oh, you know, prominent, you know, Bay City, Attorney so-and-so dies in fire. Um, so, like a week later, I am driving, I'm, you know, getting onto the highway, and right in front of me is a big white-yellow convertible. Uh, big white convertible, rather. A Cadillac convertible. And stuck in the backseat vertically. Just shoved in with no, you know, strap down or anything. Or two white flocked Christmas trees. And it's getting on the on-ramp of the car. And uh, I'm getting kind of worried because the trees are like this and the snow is like coming off of the, uh, off the flocked Christmas trees onto my car and I've got the windshield wipers going. And then finally I pass them on the highway because I envisioned a, a similar headline like, you know, local journalist gets ki uh, impaled on flocked Christmas tree on Palmetto Expressway. Film at 11. Uh, Anthony Gilmore, how are you doing? Uh, good evening good night good morning to you there in uh, in the UK all right ah so Ava here Abe Vigoda died 94 years old this time for real like it seemed like every six weeks it was like another no he's dead no no he's really alive no it's a hoax but this time this time he did it old age good long long life funny guy but it's weird that he was already the old guy when I watched him on TV 40 years ago. So that's, uh, it's just weird. It's kind of skewed. 
Uh, de -de -de, didn't miss anybody. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, mince these in a minute. Uh, my knife skills are not uh, as fast as they should be, but they're, you know, I guess they're getting better. Uh, so this is for the filling on the kibbe, uh, this particular onion. Uh, again, I'm doing half of the recipe, so hopefully that's going to be okay. Do, 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 do. Ah, stay down. Ah. And uh, everyone's got the, I'm getting all these notifications on Facebook that, you know, Entity X and Y, that they're live on, on Facebook now, which is uh, curious. Uh, Marlon Brando finally did it. Did what? Uh, what, the Abe Vigoda's gone to be with Marlon Brando now? I, uh, it's, oh no, it's, 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 okay, there's a reference, but the reference is so old, it's stupid, so I'm not even going to make it. Okay. So how are things uh, your way? Is it cold? Is it hot here? It is, uh, it was quite cold, uh, as I mentioned last time on the weekend, we were at Disney, and on Sunday, before, you know, I cooked here, I was at Disney and got up early and ran in 36 degree weather. What's live on Facebook? Um, uh, back to that in a second. Uh, the, uh, but it was cold. It was like, you know, wind gusts, you know, below 30. So, uh, and now here I was on the beach and there are people shirtless. So, yes, The Godfather. Yes, they were both in it together. Ed Vigoda and Marlon Brando, among others. Uh, oh, I'm Henry, you're not on Facebook. Ah, well, that explains it. No, there's a thing uh, called Facebook Mentions, which is for celebrities, not for regular people. For celebrities and pages and such, where, um, for instance, if you are, I think Kelly Clarkson did this, if somebody's mentioned you uh, on Facebook in a public post, the key being public, um, you can sort of search for your own name and you can comment. So somebody had commented about Kelly Clarkson saying something and she just personally piped up and said, you know, told them off, which is really weird. But now with that, you can, um, the celebrities or, or pages can go live, like Meerkat Periscope Live. And it's curious, instead of being vertical or horizontal, theirs are square. So, uh, but I'll see like, oh, you know, Mashable is live right now discussing, you know, new technology. Or Playbill is now live talking about, you know, the closings of the, for the blizzard because of the whatever. Ah, uh, that is said about Abe Goda. I do remember him. He played the somber character perfectly. Yes, the um, was it one of the one of the obits said sunken-eyed character actor Abe Vigoda. I remember uh, David Letterman had a whole regular thing about the hoaxes. You know, like the the headline saying Abe Vigoda is still is not dead, and then he'd be sitting there in the control room going hi. Or uh, Conan O'Brien one time had um. For Christmas, uh, they decorated an Abe Vigoda, so he like stood up like a Christmas tree and they put decorations on him. Funny guy. Funny guy. But now you can't use that, you know, so-and-so, oh, so-and-so died and Abe Vigoda is still among us, you know. Oh, I give me up, but Norman Lloyd is still with us. What, did he turn 100 yet? Man was in, you know, well, in the 80s, you know, from St. Elsewhere, from the 40s, you know, from Alfred Hitchcock. Um, and then he was just in Trainwreck, and the man is 100 years old. And still acting. Could you imagine? It's a man dedicated to his craft. Okay. Two more onions to go. I know it's the most exciting thing in the world watching someone chop onions. Ugh, stand up straight. I'm hoping my par I'm wondering if my parents might show up because they're supposed to be back and uh, able to see things on Meerkat now. That they, if, if they're back in town, they'd have a Wi-Fi. They'd have Wi-Fi. Where they were before did not have Wi-Fi. But everyone is, um, Apparently everyone is in the San Juan airport, like, 
pissed off that their flights have been delayed or canceled because of all the weather up north. It just so happens I have uh, friends from Columbus that were supposed to be leaving San Juan to go back to Columbus and they got stuck in San Juan for at least another day. So I hope my mom got on her flight. Uh, I remember Abe Vigoda in Joe vs. the Volcano. Oh my god, James, that movie was so bad. But I'm, but as bad as that movie was, of course, it was the first movie with um, uh, Tom Hanks and um, Meg Ryan together. But there's a scene in that movie that uh, people who haven't seen the movie don't get. But uh, I once briefly worked at a place. Um, I worked at a place which was so depressing and so somber. Everyone just walked around, uh, and I say they walked around like the people in the office in the beginning of Joe vs. the Volcano, where everything is gray and they're sad and they're marching in, the fluorescent lights are buzzing, and, and everyone's looking down at the ground and they can't leave, and that's what that company was like. And I was thinking, wow. I mean, when I left to find another job, they're like, you're so lucky, you got to leave. And I'm like, well, no one's keeping you here. There isn't a lock on the door. I mean, dude. It was weird. It was very, very strange. So that's why I love Tom and Meg acting together. Yes. Um, that was the first of what, three movies? Sleep in Seattle, and of course, you got mail. Movies about new technology become very dated very quickly. Mm. I'm just think that there are you know kids running around going, I, I they, they with no concept of what that's referring to. You got mail. Okay, ding, already. So we've got our chopped onions, yay! Um, now, sadly, in terms of, you know, excitement, uh, I need to grate an onion for the kibbeh. That's funny and true what you just said, yeah. Well, there was one reason that people gave for sticking around, because of the nature of the, the specific company. But, uh... I made a good argument back as to why not to, you know, suffer. And then the company exists no more. It was a big company. Alrighty. Yeah! So this one we're gonna grate. Uh, dee dee dee. Except for the issue with my wrist. Da da da. Okay. Um. Yeah. And chop this one's we're gonna grate. So there are two parts to this particular kibbeh dish. There's um, the uh, there's layers. There's the kibbeh, which is gonna be like um, flat flattened meatballs, we'll call. And then there's the filling, which is sort of like the cooked meat, cooked spice meat, and it's in three layers. So it's like a like a meat layer cake, uh, with the top layer, a middle layer, and the bottom layer. So it's kibbeh, filling, and kibbeh on top. So this uh, onion will be minced for, uh, gra grated for the, uh, for the kibbeh. Kibbeh, 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 kibbeh. Kibbeh, 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 kibbeh. Alrighty, come on. Let's get that top layer off. Alright, so you are gonna get grated. I give you a C. Uh, alrighty. Um, I'm not whipping out the food processor just for that. So, I'm gonna do this sucker by hand. Uh, also, I got uh, me, I uh, got me, um, over Christmas, a, um, what do you call it, uh, for, um, zesting lemons. Uh, my brain is blanking, but I finally got that, and... Uh, that's gonna go well, but I don't think that's worked for this specifically. Uh -huh. Ow! I didn't hit myself, but ow, it's all coming apart. Ow. Not good. I don't want to have to use, don't want to have to use the machine. Carajo. Sorry. Sorry, Mom. Ah! Not good. I'm gonna have to use the 
food processor. I can't get I can't get to all of it without and it has to be sort of liquefied. So here we go. Who are you looking at there? Uh Waltami, thank you. Hello. Hello. I didn't want to have to do this. I have to use the, the food processor. Too bad. Here it is. It's considered disabled in a wheelchair using my hands. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not know that, James. I have my sympathies. I'll distract you with some noise. How about that? Mm -hmm. I like them apples. Hmm. I need to be able to open this. There, okay. You can open and it can close. All right, so this is gonna get loud, but not for long. So I'm gonna give you a three count if you need to like, you know, put in your ear, hit the mute button or something. So, one, two, three, go. Here comes Thunder Mountain, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. Okay. Let's get that out of there. Into here. See, this wasn't as bad as that egg, what is it, the eggplant that one time that was toad deafening that my dad had to call my husband and text him and say, go get him some earbuds now in the middle of the show, which is very funny. See, the comedy, you missed the comedy. Okay. Um, yeah, it's graded enough. There. So this is for the kibbe. And uh, we're gonna pretend we didn't see that. Okay, so I gotta get rid of this trash and we'll be right back. So now, uh, la, la, la. yes, get well quick. Uh, it sucks to be in pain. Very much. Okay, graded, uh, diced. Um, one for one for the other. So I need to keep these two things apart. Okay, come uh, de, come de. Please clarify. Okay, we're gonna clean you. Meanwhile, moving on. Uh, okay, so now uh, that we've chopped everything we need to chop, I'm gonna clean that off. Turning up the heat a little bit on my chickpeas because there, there's no bubbling happening. So, coming right back. Just have to be clean. Must be clean. Alrighty, that's a mess. Uh, Nandak Kumar, thank you for the like. Um, okay. So now, I'm sorry I keep saying things the same way every time. Um, okay, I need to figure out how much lamb I have because I chose to do half the recipe because I can only eat so much. There's only two of us. So I decided to do half of it. Like I said, it said to use 800 grams of lamb for the filling and 800 gram, gram for the kibbeh, which sounded like way too much. Uh, because uh, 800 grams turned out to be like each one 1.75 pounds so I was looking for 1.75 pounds of lamb altogether and I happened to land the mean butcher who doesn't want to have to actually chop anything 
and he told me, pointed me towards the pre-made packages of ground lamb, which are a pound a piece. But that's two pounds, which is more than I need. See no evil, hear no evil. Uh, one of the Richard Pryor thinks uh, they are mispronouncing comedy as call me day. Com call me day. Ah, creo. Okay. So, um, on. Well, no, stop, off. Make you zero. Okay, right now it's in ounces. We want to make you zero. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for grams, since that's, uh, grams. Okay, so I'm looking for 400 grams on each side. That's 465, as I feared. So I'm going to have to package and label my leftovers, which sucks. Uh, hopefully this will work. Oh boy. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Add storage bags to the groceries list. Ta-da! Uh, okay, so now I need to cut this open. And get the appropriate amount of lamb going here. Um, it for one of them the meat has to be really fine and it said to have them grounded twice now the, the the butcher I went to on Sunday he was really nice he ground lamb anyone I wanted to he took the stuff he chopped it he said not a problem this guy was not a nice person he's been a not nice person before so that's 455 we're looking for 400 Come on, big money, big money, big money. Okay. You. No. That's not much. Whatever. Uh, it, mm, mm, I feel old if no one has ever seen that movie, lol. Um, oh, here, oh, see, uh, here, I saw that movie, but so long ago. I mean, I saw it when it came out. Um, with, uh, what's the other? Uh, he did, like, more than one, they did more than one movie together. Uh, Richard Pryor and, uh, Gene Wilder. Um, Stir Crazy, but they were, I mean, I gather they weren't very good. So, uh, I, uh, I didn't see, I may have seen that first one. He wasn't in, um... Silver Streak, was he? I mean, that movie had an effect on my life, uh, which is something that goes beyond um, what I would want to talk about here. Uh, okay, so we're looking for zero. Starting with zero here. We're looking for zero. 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 Okay. Zero, okay, we're looking for 400 grams. That's two. God, I... I didn't cut it all the way around. Problem. That's way more than I need. Okay. Almost. I hate having this little bits left over. Oh, um, the Wachmadougal, the leftover lamb, uh, recipe thing, um, that I had from Tuesday. Uh, I did something that, uh, has been my goal in this whole process of learning to cook, uh, by doing a different country, working my way around the world, um, is that I took those leftovers and I just put them together with other stuff that I had and I made up a thing that was really tasty. It wasn't very exciting, but I knew to add, you know, this and that, and it worked out well. And for that one, I, um, I made, uh, a junior, hey, how you doing? 
uh, a, um, a stir fry with uh, risotto and um, risotto and what? Uh, in a in a wine reduction because I knew I wasn't gonna be using wine for an uh, the, the Islamic country, but I said screw it. Now that one's just a bonus dish, so I don't care. Ground lamb, G R O U N D L A M B, and you're gonna go in the F R E E Z E R. Okay. Okay. Label. See, I stick things. I have things in the freezer that don't have labels. Like I'm sure I have goat in there, but I didn't label it, so I'm not sure if it is goat. Go figure. Okay. Teeny bits of lamb, which I'll find some use for at some point in the distant future, after it comes out of the freezer. Okay. I know it's silly, but you know, OCD is a scary thing. Okay, so I got 400 grams of lamb this way and that way. Use the leftover lamb in either a meatball or some type burger mix, indeed. Uh, yeah, like I said, I did this thing yesterday with that leftover lamb stuff. I did risotto and I kept adding spices. I had the spice mix, which you'll see later, and I threw that in because I knew it would work. And I threw in some uh, sweet corn for some sweetness, and uh, some wine, and some lemon for acid, and it worked out quite well. So, uh, meat one way, meat the other way. Uh, so now we need to set out stuff for... Kibbe is going to be here. The dressing is going to be there. Okay, so I need uh, for the... Okay, I did this already. Okay, this thing called Baharat Mix. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, I will have a link on the website for the recipe for the spice mix. It is uh, quite standard in the Levant, in the you know Middle East. Uh, so it's Baharat, um, my horrible handwriting, B-A-H-A-R-A-T. It's a combination of spices and cinnamon and cumin and stuff like that. And it smells really good. But I've made it before and this is leftover, so I don't need to make it again. Yay, I finally get to use something that has been sitting around. So I need two separate places for this. So for place number one, I need one teaspoon of it here. I used this in that dish I did yesterday too. And uh, another teaspoon for the filling. So it's going to go both ways. Baharat is flexible that way. This way, James says, meet me this way, I'll meet you that way, ha ha It's a meat market. Okay, so that's the Baharat mix. Now we need cinnamon, uh, which we have a ton of here. Um, we need uh, half a teaspoon, this is for the filling. So filling, filling is here, kibbe is there, okay. So, cinnamon. Okay, for the cinnamon, I need half a teaspoon of the cinnamon, which is optional, but I'm going to use it anyway. And that is for the filling. Filling is on this side. Okay, uh, for the filling, I'm going to need half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of salt, and that is for the filling. Am I right? Yes. And for the kibbe, I'm going to need two teaspoons of salt. Tablespoon, teaspoon. Okay, two. Hopefully, I'm not missing anybody. See, if I was on Periscope, I'd be missing everybody all the time. And I don't like to miss people's comments, because it really sucks to say something and then not be acknowledged. Doo -doo -doo. So, uh, cinnamon, salt, kibbe, 
uh, filling black pepper. So we're needing black pepper two ways. So our black pepper is going to go, this is the filling, this is the kibbit. Okay, so uh, half a tea, one, no, one and a half teaspoons. That's more. One and a half teaspoons of black pepper for the kibbe, which is this side. Uh, one tablespoon, one teaspoon. Uh, again, I hope I'm not missing anybody. Uh, okay, one and a half. Uh, la, la, la. Half, 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 half. Eighth, fourth, half. Okay. So one and a half teaspoons of the black pepper for the filling. Filling is on this side. Uh, for the uh, kibbe, which is on this side, uh, it's gonna be a lot of pepper. It's how much pepper? Three teaspoons of pepper it is. So, one, two, three. That's a lot of pepper. Okay, and uh, now I need to set out some butter, and then we're gonna get cooking. How, how, how do you like that? So, uh, a uh, tablespoon of butter. I say you're a tablespoon. Butter. And that's gonna be to roast our pine nuts later. Uh, which reminds me, uh, butter, pine nuts, exactly what I need. Uh, okay, so this is here. We have our pine nuts, and we use them two different places. We, I just had to buy more pine nuts. These suckers are expensive. I was surprised how expensive they were. How much do you think, price is right, how much do you think that, that bag of pine nuts? Name that price. See if you can. I was surprised. I was surprised. So for one, uh, I'm gonna need uh, one and a half tablespoons worth of, uh, what? If you can't stand the heat, get out of Clifty's kitchen, huh? I'm in on breath. I'm missing these back and forth things, but it's okay. I don't think I'm, I'm part of it. So, um, uh, one and a half tablespoons. So, the so one and a half tablespoons goes one way. One and a half. I'm just gonna eyeball a half. Goes this way. However, I additionally need to have uh, a third of a cup for uh, the chickpeas. So I'm gonna do the, roast them all at once. And then I'll separate them after they're cooked. So that, two ninety nine. dollars too low. Guess again. Guess again. Okay, pine nuts, I will stick you here for now. Alrighty. Pine nuts, the expensive pine nuts. Okay, that's gonna go like in the middle. Uh, and then now we get moving. We'll clean you later. Smell you later. Gonna go over to the side and uh, we're gonna get started on the... Just making sure. Okay, we're gonna get the, this is for the filling. The filling, we're gonna have our onions our minced onions, right? No. No, no, no. First the meat, and then the onions. $12, too high. $5.99, too low. $9, too high. This goes away. Okay, time to switch sides. Uh, we are playing the prices right indeed. 
where they are playing for the price of a small bag of pine nuts. At Publix in Jupiter, Florida. Do, do, do. Okay, so I'm putting you over here. Uh, Eight dollars to lie. The correct price was six ninety nine. Six ninety nine for a whittle bag. Oh, pine nuts. Okay, what I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna use this skillet. Seven oh one. Seven nine seven oh. Yeah, you're closest. So seven oh one. So it's six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. You might not any. Okay, I'm putting Mr. Cast Iron Skillet away, cause uh, that is not gonna be used today. Uh, what did you win? Nobody got the right price. I'll send you some Baharat spice mix. How do you like that? Okay, so in this pan right here, we are going to melt butter. This butter right there first. And am I right with that? No, wrong, 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 wrong. Rewind. No, not melting butter. This is olive oil. Olive oil this time. The pine nuts, or the butter's for the pine nuts. Okay, olive oil here, and we're going with two tablespoons of oil. One tablespoon, two tablespoons. I'm going to heat up that. And I just now, right before, butter. It's like butter. Like a big stick of butter. Okay. Uh, the meat is over there, so might as well have everyone over there. This is for the kid. Okay. Hi! We're back. Catch you later. Thank you, Anthony, for coming by. Um, I really need to catch one of your streams again. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen it on when I've been, when I've been looking. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep trying. Take another little walk with you through the castles. Alrighty, so um, I just before I came on, I saw an article on the tasting table, which is kind of like my one of my favorite websites. And it was saying the key, I mean, uh, most people probably know this, I didn't. The key to uh, food not sticking is counterintuitive. It's that the heat is too low to make sure it's hot enough. So then when something hits it, which has to be dry, it creates a steam effect, which keeps it from sticking. Which is interesting. I would not have thought that. So we are heating up the oil. So that's why I'm waiting uh, for this to heat up. Uh, you know what? This is weird because it said over low heat, specifically, which strikes me as odd. So um, I'm going to put on a low-ish heat, and since it's there, I'm going to follow instructions. Do what they tell me. Okay. In goes the meat. This is uh, for the filling. We're making the filling here. So in you go. I'm going to chop you up until you are uh, starting to release your juices. I wonder if you can be someplace that's... No, but if you're too close to that, you're going to have problems. So, I can put you on the other side here, though. You get the reverse angle. There you go. Don't fall in, though. I'm trusting you on this. Okay. Uh, I would put that in a cast iron frying pan. Um... Uh, yeah, but considering what's coming next, um, uh, no, because I'm gonna be using the skillet in lieu of a 12-inch baking dish, because the, uh, the, uh, video, uh, attached to the recipe, the, it kind of went into, like, a big, like a cake dish, and it gets baked in the oven, um... So, in lieu of that, I'm going to use this. Partially because I'm using half of the recipe, and I hope that's going to work out. Um, I would not have thought of browning ground lamb 
would have required any oil. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm just, this, this is what they do. So, uh, following, following what they said. Um, again, when you see the videos online, they're not, you know, live. So they don't take, you know, two and a half hours to, to get through. It's like, abracadabra, here's all your stuff. You do this, you do that, and boom, you're done. Um... I'm really not grooving on the low heat thing, but that's what it says. The premise here is to cook it constantly, stirring up the meat, and then when browned and separated and the moisture is starting to evaporate, to stir in the onion. So that is what we're doing. I'm, I'm really surprised on the low heat. But then again, kibbe, traditionally, that I've seen, that I've had, has been raw. Um... And uh, they mix everything in, like right there at the table, like they would do guacamole, but with raw meat, and it's really great. And rather expensive. Um, so, uh, and also, this isn't gonna get completely cooked here. It gets wound up baked in the oven, too. So, um, I guess that's what the argument for the uh, lower heat is. And um, like I mentioned before, the recipe says, to get ground lamb and have your butcher to grind it twice. And I had the butcher do that for the ground lamb for uh, Sunday's uh, stuffed zucchini dish um, because I got the nice butcher. This time I got the jerk butcher. Who said, hey, we've got ground lamb right there in packages. I can't break them, sorry. Jerk face. I thought he was fired. Everyone else is so nice. Oh, okay. While that's happening, I need to get, take a pause that refreshes because I am very, very thirsty. I had my run today. Had my run today where I saw the giant beach ball, the giant globe beach ball being rolled up up the coast by two men and a dog. Uh, I paid eight dollars for seven ounce sirloin at my local supermarket. Yes, I think you mentioned that. Um, I, although I didn't see that. Uh, during the stream, I uh, saw that afterwards. Uh, coffee, uh, do you have a ceramic cast iron pot? Oh, you probably mean Cliffy. Uh, do you have a ceramic cast iron pot? Ceramic, uh, well, I have that ceramic, uh, not cast iron. So then the answer is no. I have the ceramic nonstick, which um, I made all wobbly because I didn't know that I was doing a bad thing. Whatever time that I put some cold liquid into a hot pan, um, which happened on my saucepan and my skillet, which is boo, not good. So we're waiting for this. Uh, it's an all around good type of stew pot or soup pot to have. Ceramic cast iron. How can it be both things? Ceramic on the inside, or ceramic on the inside, cast iron on the outside? I mean, you've seen the white one that I have, that it's, that's the one that's gotten all wobbly, so I'm trying not to use it. That's why I'm with this. Because on that one, like the heat's always in the middle. They got this not flat, which is, as, as uh, someone said, they could call it a uh, Balboa, Rocky Balboa, the pan, because it's rocks. Not in a good way. Not in eh, that kind of way. Uh, okay, it's starting to separate. It's kind of browning. Low heat. They said low heat. Low heat it is. Um, I paid $9 one time for ground buffalo, never again. Now, was it bad because it was cheap or bad because you didn't like it? Uh, just like your cast iron frying pan, but covered in ceramic layered. Huh, no, I have not seen that. I will keep an eye out though. I will definitely keep an eye out because I need to replace, I, I, I reluctantly need to replace the two things that I ruined. So, so starting to brown, almost there, still, the liquids are starting to separate, but not completely there yet. Somebody something. Tammy, George Clo what, wait, when what? George Clooney is now in the Netherlands for his foundation, not on our watch. Oh, oh, his federated, okay. Um, is that for the whole buffalo? Bad because it was only a pound for nine bucks. Ah, I see. Yeah, when um, we have, uh, there was a point that we had a couple cookouts and invited some people over um, and uh, made bison burgers. The husband loves bison burgers. 
and they're really good. And I mean, we like them, and we make them for other people, and they like them. But we haven't done it in a long time. Um, a variety of reasons. One is we have no more propane, and two, it's not been like what you call your re reciprocal invitations, socially speaking, which is kind of irritating. It's like we have friends that we only see once a year when we invite them to our, you know, holiday party. Never, you know, call, say, hey, let's have lunch or dinner or coffee or go to a movie or anything. It's like, come on, people. I'm not asking you to cook me dinner. Although I see all those pictures on Facebook where you do for other people. FOMO. Fear of missing out. It's a thing. The struggle is real. Okay. So, I love bison burger. We have bison in our forests here. Yes! They once roamed the land before they were hunted to extinction, or near extinction. Yes. Yes, indeed. Alberta. Okay, I think we are kind of there. So, now that it has gotten there, I need to take a picture. And now we're going to add the onions. Uh... And, am I right? Yes. So we can add in the onions, minced, the minced onions. This is here. The uh, Borealis Forest. Oh, like the, like the Aurora Borealis? Okay, onions go in. And then comes a lot of other stuff too. I really don't get, well, I do get the low heat, but it's weird for me. Because I'm not used to doing this in a low heat. So, bring over my other stuff. Some onions go in. And then we're gonna add our Baharat spice mix, which is this one. Which is all kinds of uh, smelly good. It has, uh, I think it has cardamom and Cinnamon and cumin. I'm thinking. It's been a while since I made it. Uh, but I will have a link to that recipe on the website also. That's cliffyland.com. Fort McMurray. Huh. And we're adding our pepper. And our salt. And our cinnamon. And we're going to mix it up. Stir it up. And then we're going to cook it until the onion is soft. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit because uh, that just seems awfully low. Fort McMurray, hey? I think there's a Fort McMurray down stateside here, too, if I'm not mistaken. The Fort McHenry in Baltimore went to that one. I'm kind of surprised that none of the forts, like, uh, survived here in Florida that I know of. I mean, there's um, St. Augustine. That's the big uh, Spanish, which is really cool. Um, so this could be the filling for the kibbe dish. So this could be like the middle of the meat pie kind of thing. The smell of those spices must be amazing. Yes, it's good. It's not as strong as I thought it would be, but it's very good. So it's got, it's, it's good and subtle. Um, I know it's been sitting there for a little while. Um, I don't remember exactly when I made it. I'm in a guest Lebanon, which places it at about a year ago. Cliffy, you've been all over the place. Um, uh, oh yeah, I've, I, yeah, I've been all over most of the states, um, and then when I was a kid. I got to see uh, large sections of the world, yet not seeing other large sections of the world. So, uh, so I don't know. Now that I think about it, there aren't uh, alphabetically speaking. There's not that many geographically. Yes. Um, there are not that many countries that I've been to left on the list. I mean, obviously the U.S. and the U.K. Um, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, Venezuela. 
uh, that might be it. Yeah, I think that might be it in terms of the, the alphabetically the countries that I've been to that yet to go. I've been to Iceland. That was really cool. I've been as quickly all over Europe and you know all of the Caribbean and large parts of South America, and of course the states and Canada and Mexico. Um, but never been to Africa or Asia, and. Oceania. I mean, I went to Hawaii, but that doesn't count. Okay, we're waiting for this to soften. We're kind of almost there. I'm still hoping that my uh, my chickpeas are simmering. It's on, you know, kind of. It's not bubbling, but it's a. Uh, it's uh, simmering, supposedly. Uh, I'm getting one seriously. Okay. Waiting for you too soften. Uh, if you come to Scotland, I'll cook dinner for you and your husband. That's very nice of you. Yeah, we keep thinking about. Uh, uh, I mean, when after I had, I just keep saying after I hit uh, Zimbabwe, after we have our party and or have my big Puerto Rican fe fest. Um, I'm debating that. Uh, we, I promised my husband a vacation, and it's going to be you know in the middle of summer here. So I'm thinking uh, Southern Hemisphere. I'm gonna like, you know, do a lot of relaxation, deep breathing exercises, and, you know, and go away for a while. And I'm thinking New Zealand. I'd love to go to Ireland or Scotland, he says. Uh, yeah, um, we've talked about going to UK, because uh, we want to go see Liverpool, he's never seen London, I saw London as a kid uh, twice. Um, and and the rough environs, you know, nearby. Um, but uh, that's about it. Uh, didn't didn't go north or over to Ireland. I think my parents are Ireland. Scotland looks beautiful. So, had you ever heard of that um, black, uh, the band of the Black Watch? That, that this is how I remember the name. Um, I want to go to Spain. Spain is phenomenal. I love Spain. I had relatives living in Spain until not too long ago. In España. So they took me to Avila and Toledo. But I want to see more of Spain. But this is one of those things. I, I want to see Canada. You're in Canada. You want to see more of Canada? Yeah. It's a lot to see. The first thing I learned about Canada is it's so big that some people live their whole lives and can never see the whole country. I'm thinking, well, yeah, you could say that about a lot of things, too, but it's big. Okay, I declare this softened enough. Uh, the Black Watch was a Scottish military regiment who always have a pipe band. Indeed, so it was the band of the Black Watch. And But they had a hit. They had a hit song, a, a minor, minor hit song. But I just got it uh, yesterday. And I listened to it, and I thought of you. I was like, oh, good, bagpipe music. So that, that goes along with my Royal Scots Dragoon Guards. Okay, so now that that has softened, I'm going to let that cool, cool down. Because we have a lot uh, to do yet. So that goes off. Um, in fact, I'm going to let it cool off in a bowl. Because I'm going to need that pan later. So, into so I'm gonna use this skillet as the cake pan, and I hope that is not a really horrible decision because I made that uh, basil cornbread. I baked it in this, and that worked out really well. So I'm hoping that uh, this will work this time. So there's our filling, and uh, let me let this cool down for a hot minute. No pun intended. And uh, so now we're going to get our small skillet. I'll let it cool down there. Our small skillet over here. Actually, I'll put it over here. And uh, I'm going to melt our butter. I like to across Canada and the United States. That'd be cool. You should stream tours of it. Yes. Okay, so here we're melting butter. Uh, this is going to be for our pine nuts. 
and um, have to remember to take a certain amount out after they're toasted. So melting the butter. Once that's melted, then we're gonna start toasting the pine nuts. I'm a, I'm a little nervous traveling. I traveled so much as a kid. It's it's nuts uh, that now I I just kind of it's a, it's a being away from home stuff. I'm like I like to sleep in my own bed, but we travel, but mostly around Florida and the U.S. We did get to see you know I mean the series on New York, D.C., L.A., back to Columbus. Um, the other parts of Florida, uh, so, you know, Orlando and environs. And then, so, you know, we got around a little bit. I just have to keep saying this to the husband. Saying, we've been around, sort of. Okay, I'm gonna clean this down now. I'm gonna need it in a minute. Be right back. Uh, who are we looking at here? Uh, if everyone could stream their travels, I could live vicariously through them. S streaming, oh, uh, uh, me. thank you for the like. Streaming. Yes, you know what? Um, that's one thing, that Periscope thing is kind of cool, that you can click on the different, you know, maps, and you can just say, okay, now I'm going to see... You know, Canada, I'm going to see. So I did a whole thing around the world the other day. I was like, oh, this guy's in Tanzania. This woman's in, you know, Dubai. This guy's in India. This guy's in Thailand. This guy's in New Zealand. This guy's in Colombia. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And uh, oh, so we're roasting our pine nuts here. Uh, I'd love to go back to the Daytona Beach. I could just stay there and camp on the beach with the sound of the ocean. We can go right outside here. The husband wake, woke up this morning and was saying, it is so cool that I can just stand outside our front door and I hear the ocean. This is so cool that we live here. We never thought we'd live in a place like this. Especially living in Ohio. Where like I dreamt of what does the ocean look like? I don't remember. Now I see it every day and I'm really grateful. I'm really, really grateful. Uh, thank you for the follow. Let me see if I can get the... Uh, you have a name that goes with that handle. Uh, Darius, thank you very much. I think you give you a follow back there. Um, so we're roasting our pine nuts here uh, until they turn brown. It's weird, I'm feeling this thing. Uh, I took two years of it in high school, um, but I can't remember much of it. Uh, I didn't catch what the it was, but that's not my conversation, so. Uh, while this is toasting, uh, I need to make sure I have a third cup set aside, uh, and then that's gonna, the rest of it's gonna wind up back in that meat mixture. Once they turn brown. Beautiful Atlantic Ocean. Good night, Pamplona. Uh, do you have family in Spain? Talking to Tammy. Uh, the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. It, it, it can be. It can be. It's, um, you see surfers and we see kite surfers all the time. There's a whole section where people are just up there and I jog by and I see them all, you know, with their kites and, you know, surfing. Not kite. Yeah, kite surfing. It's like, it's like a giant parachute and they're on a surfboard and they're kind of, shh. so you see all these parachute things all like floating over the water. It's really beautiful. He, um, has roast thing is pine nuts that must hurt. Haha, <laughs> bad joke. Yeah, sad right. 
A resident punster, James. Sadai, king of the dad jokes. It's cute. Brings levity to the day. So, um, in butter. We're waiting for them to brown a little bit. Then I'm going to take some out, put them in the meat mixture. And then, uh, we're going to go with our bulgur wheat back over there. Hello, Dominican... Oh, you're in the Dominican Republic, I'm assuming. Um... Uh, your name is DJ Ala. Hey there. De donde en la República Dominicana estás usted? I feel really embarrassed that I've never been to the Dominican Republic. My parents have many times, but I never got to. Haven't had the chance. They were just in Punta Cana just uh, not too long ago. Which is, of course, you know where everyone goes now. Okay, so these are getting nice and toasty, and they're ready to go. Uh, and the great thing about the Atlantic is if you jump on a boat in the right direction, you arrive in God's Country Island, then down to, ah, uh, Santo Domingo, ah! Buenas! Como las cosa? You can go see at uh, cliffyland.com, see uh, everything that you missed from the previous countries. I did Dominican Republic way back before Meerkat existed. Um, I think I did it pretty well. Um, soy Puerto Riqueño, so, you know, um, we're always a, it's like a little triumvirate there. Cuba, Puerto Rico, and then the DR. So I'm taking, uh, that much of that and then putting the rest of that in here with the meat mixture. Complete with the butter, because I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Carrie Osborne is in the house. Thank you for liking the restream. Okay, so we're going to mix the pine nuts into the meat mixture here. I, technically, I was supposed to put that in while it was still cooking. Um, but, um, I'll deal. I'm running out of time, too. I'm definitely running out of time. Okay. Super definitely running out of time. Oh my god, I just realized how out of time I'm getting. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you're gonna sit here and cool for a minute, and now we need to move very, very quickly because now I'm starting to freak out. Watch me freak. Okay. Moving you back over here. Ah, que somos vecinos de isla. Así mismo, nene. Así es la cosa. is how it is. Okay, these pine nuts are going to be for the dressing on the chickpeas, which come later. Meanwhile, over here, uh, it's time to mix our kibbe, and I need my camera for that. Alrighty, and so we're starting off with the bulgur wheat, which has been patiently sitting here since yesterday under my lily pads. Shh, bulgur wheat. Been soaking in water. So that's going to go in to the bowl, oh my god, that's a lot. I hope this bowl is big enough. Oh my god, I hope this works. Run, Forrest, run! Yes. Okay, so bulgur wheat goes in the bowl, and uh, to that we're gonna add the lamb. Chunk of lamb, the grated onion. De qué sitio en Borinquen es? A familia de San Juan, Bayamón, Sidra, Rio Piedra, todo por ahí. Por esas partes. And uh, so the uh, grated onion goes in. I got to wash my hands again. Okay, and to that, make sure we got the salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, 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 pepper. I'll bet you anything I'm missing something. I'll bet you anything. Indeed, I forgot to add the Baharat spice mix. 
los caseríos. Los, oh, los caseríos. Um, he ido a los caseríos. O sea, pasé todos mis veranos en Puerto Rico. El resto tiempo en Miami. Uh, Diana, thank you for the restream. Uh, okay. This is that spice mix, the Baharat spice mix. Uh, you can Google a recipe for it or I'll link it uh, on the blog. So we're having that both ways. Hello, Diana. Diana. I guess people don't sing that um, Paul Anka song to you much anymore because it's so old now. So we're mixing this all up with our hands. And it's going to have to be a paste. So uh, this is going to be a late dinner. And I don't think that's going to be really a, a big hit around here. Uh, and the reason it's late is because it has to cook for 25 minutes uh, in the oven. But also this business has to rest for 30 minutes. Which is meaning dinner is going to be very late, which is a problem. Problem. I thought I started early enough. I can never freaking tell sometimes. Okay, so we're getting our bulgur wheat mix. Oh, please stay by me, Diana. Yes. Me encanta Puerto Rico. Soy hijo de Dominicana y vivo en España. Ah, en España. ¿Qué parte de España? Dije que tenía familia viviendo en Madrid. Fui a Ávila y Toledo. Y después una vez visto de Barcelona a Madrid, pero eso era muy, muy, muy rápido. I said I was saying once I uh, was in Spain and, and then I was in Spain again. And came back around from Barcelona to Madrid and drove through. And... But my family has left a while. Cliffy, I have to go make dinner. Sorry, I'm looking great. Thank you. I'll see you later. Thank you for coming by, Tammy. I will catch you on the flip side. Okay, this is starting to come together, which is a good thing. Uh, uh, until it becomes a paste and may need water to keep soft. Well, it seems soft enough. Good night, Tammy. Pamplona, Provincia, Navarra, para, para Norte. Ah! Parte norte. Fui desde Madrid hacia el norte y después llegué a Francia. Por ahí. Y a una ciudad que nos quedamos uh, en el norte de España, pero no me acuerdo el nombre. Pero es solamente por la noche. So I was saying that uh, we went north in through, uh, from Madrid up north to France. And, uh, and we stayed in a city in the north of Spain just overnight. And I, I, just don't, I barely remember the name. If I saw it on a map, I'd remember. So I got a giant meatball. That's ah, a big meatball. And we're going to cover it for 30 minutes, allegedly. Allegedly. So, here we go. Donde hacen los san femine. No, de eso no estoy tan familiar. Okay, so we cover you and let you sit. Uh, for 30 minutes, allegedly. So, um, we're gonna move on now to the chickpea dish and do some prep stuff on that. Um, we already drained the chickpeas and we boiled and simmered them for uh, an hour. We still need another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but meanwhile, I need to preheat my oven to 350. And get out a baking dish. It's hiding under my paella. Thing. Oh, you saw a paella tremenda for España. I did a great paella for Spain a few weeks ago. Um, you can catch that on the blog. Uh, you can see the replay of the video on the blog at Cliffy Land and uh, such. It was so good. I got. I bought a bigger paella pan and having a paella party later. Okay, here, while that is uh, preheating, I can get some pita bread. 
I did not make my own pita bread this time. I have made pita bread before. Uh, the first time for Bosnia Herzegovina did a horrible job. Uh, I tried it again for another country, a little better, a little better the third time, but I don't feel like trying the fourth. Um, so I'm only taking two pita breads out. The sun termines. Estoy pensando que es eso, pero no estoy seguro. I'm thinking what that is, but I'm not sure what it is. Okay, so uh, we got our pita bread, and now we're going to slice you. Okay, and I'm gonna slice you with a knife. I'm gonna do it into what? Uh, into into edges? No. Uh, to pieces. So pita bread. When I cut the pita bread, of course, um, on Sunday, I just tore it with my hands and kind of massacred it. But I've not been able to make pita bread in a way that actually, you know, looks like pita bread. Um, that, you know, where you could stuff something in the middle. Um, I imagine lots of reasons for that. Lavender Femchi, thank you for the like and the restream. How are you doing? How are you? Uh, do we're slicing up our pita, which is gonna go uh, on the bottom and on top of the chickpeas, uh, which are still bubbling, supposedly, on the stove. I mean, I have it on a medium heat, and you know, I don't see any bubbles, but I do see steam. So, I mean, I guess that's okay. Because I did not want to use canned chickpeas, because I didn't want... I mean, if I can avoid it... I mean, here I'm cutting out this pita, but... Uh, I, I prefer fresh to canned, if I can. No pun intended. This looks like a pie chart. Ten percent of your stream watchers are return viewers. Ninety percent left before you said anything. Uh, entertainment, thank you for the restream. Muchísimas gracias. That's entertainment. Um, okay, pita chips on the baking tray. There was another dish that I was thinking of making also, not tonight, but I just did not have the time to do it. But that involved making crumbs out of pita, which is interesting. Uh, and then mixing it in with other stuff. But it's also kind of close to this, and this is like an appetizer dish. Oh, dinner's gonna be so late. I'm gonna be in so much trouble. Okay. So we're gonna be baking that for 10 minutes once the oven heats up. <sighs> okay, how are we doing? Um, our minced garlic is over there. Uh, we have yogurt in the fridge. Oh, I need to get out some other stuff. Oh, what are we looking at here? Um, there was a time when I was younger that I couldn't even look. I have a photograph of paella as the prawn heads with their eyes, all the legs. You know what, as you may have seen when um, I cooked Spain, I did Paella Valenciana, which uh, is sort of like supposedly one of the original, you know, the original Paella. Uh, and the original Paella um, had la um, chicken and rabbit um, and no seafood. And apparently it's, from what I read, that uh, the idea of shellfish in it, uh, it's in there, but that's more of a more modern creation. It was suggesting that's also uh, more, um, but I don't know. This is just what I read. I don't want to speak as the voice of authority on things. Uh, but yes, most paellas I've had before had seafood. This one did not, and it, it surprised some people. Actually, the, uh, the original paella recipe, like the first one, I, like ever, also I think it had snails. Which I would love to use. 
I have not had I have not, you know, had it all together to cook with snails yet. But I love the taste. Uh, five more minutes, I think. Um, did that make you vegetarian? Uh, five more minutes. Uh, I think that's enough on the chickpeas, really. So, uh, where is my colander? I'm sorry, I've got so much crap here in the, uh, in the sink. I need to drain my chickpeas. They're almost ready. Almost. And I drain them into this here bowl. It's probably bigger than I need. Uh, thank you for the follow. Oh, Diana. Uh, I love it. Uh, now then I can head and peel prawns and deal with the legs, etc. I love it. Uh, lost my list of followers again with a new update. Oh, really? Oh, that's sucky. Um, and this new update. Well, I, I mean, supposedly it just says... I keep seeing that a lot. Um, bug fixes. I haven't seen any bugs, really. The only screw-up that happened recently was kind of my fault. Mmm, um, snails. I use um, squeezy, spoiled, long, or conch. Uh, yeah, um, snails. Um, I love um, escargot. And I guess you can get them canned. Um, but uh, I, I skipped it for France because there was so much to do with France. My big paella pan ended up too small. Yeah, I wound up getting, I mean, I had one just fine for us, but now I'm thinking of having people over, so it's gonna be a big paella pan. And I tried seasoning it, and I kind of burnt it, and before I even used it, and I had to scrub it and re... It's gonna be okay. In here. Okay, I need to drain my chickpeas, which I am hoping are ready. Ready or not. Here I come. Okay. And taking out my... You can't see this. My, uh... Cheesecloth of flavor. Okay. Hi, these are chickpeas. These are uncola nuts. Okay. These are now cooked chickpeas. Into the bowl. Uh, we're gonna season those with salt and we'll see how they taste. Toby. Okay, still waiting for that oven to preheat. So season with salt. Don't cook mine with heads or legs. Low battery. Oh, plug in. Plug in, darling. Oh, I saw the, the I mean, I don't tend to, I, actually, I hate memes uh, on Facebook and stuff like that. Um, I mean, really, but I saw one on Tumblr, which I thought was funny, which had um, the Snapchat icon on top and with straw, and he's sucking, like, um, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, there will be blood. He's taking his ice cream, his uh, milkshake straw, and it's sucking the big giant battery, the drain, all the power out of the battery. Chickpeas equal great hummus. Yes. Yes, indeedy. Mm -hmm. One little, one little chickpea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. A little more salt. Okay. Taste it. Taste it again. Okay. Tastes good, nutty. Oh, um, I forget if it's Montenegro or, um, or, uh, uh, good. Montenegro or m -m 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 Macedonia. Uh, but I did this incredible dish way before Meerkat, which was uh, just chickpea flour on a really, really super hot skillet that you've had in the oven at like blazing heat 
and then you just put it on, put it in, take it out, and it's flat, and it's like crepe-like, and it's so damn good. Mmm. I'm cooking paella, similar to cooking kigui in terms of the rice being shallow and sucking up liquid. Yes! Okay. We've got our chickpeas. Oh, yay! In. So there is our oven. We're gonna go in for 10 minutes. Set timer for 10 minutes. Go. Okay. So while that does that, uh, we season with salt. Uh, we let it cool. We're gonna add in our minced garlic. Uh, also, the stuff actually. Not some of the other stuff. Kind of hope I didn't screw up. No, I did not. Okay, minced garlic here. Boom. Did not come out. Okay. Sort of like Jodie Foster speech. Okay. And uh, now we're adding other stuff. So we're adding a cup of yogurt. I have yogurt. Really? <clears throat> I got some chickpeas stuck in the back of my throat. Ah! I mean, this strikes me like it's a cup of yogurt. I mean, the bowl, no, maybe it's not. Maybe it's gonna take two of these. I know it says 5.2 ounces on the outside, which is not a cup. I don't know much, but I know that. And then keep going with one more. You know what, these little uh, plain Greek yogurts in the store, I can only buy them in the small or the big giant tub. I couldn't get like anything in between. There's no Goldilocks size, which was disappointing. So, and there you go. Well, it's gonna be all, it's gonna be both of you. Both of you are gonna be a cup. Yogurt, go. Scaring the cat. Okay, and uh, yogurt in. Mm -mm -mm. Didn't miss anybody, okay. So now we're adding ground cumin. Cumin. And here I went, I put this up again. I didn't think I would need my measuring cups again later. I don't know much, but I know I love you. Another golden oldie, yes. Um, that song, most people know the Linda Ronstadt. Um, what's his name? A, I want to say Aaron. Um, the Aaron Neville version. Uh, but there were versions before. There's a, uh, but it had a different name. So the all I need to know don't know much was they called it, but all I need to know was the original title, and I, I, it was by Bette Midler and separately by Bill Medley of the um, Righteous Brothers. They both um, recorded that before, um, but hers is the best, I think. So I don't know much. <laughs> cocoa butter in the cocoa butter. I can't do an Aaron Neville impression or a Horatio Sands doing Aaron Neville impression. <laughs> Like it, cocoa butter. Okay, we're going with half a teaspoon of ground cumin, which I put down here. Really? Really? Well, 
This is gonna happen. Okay, half a teaspoon. I'm just so upset about my timing being so off. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this. So, half a teaspoon of ground cumin. Uh, do you remember the song Jones vs. Jones? I love that song. Um, cool in the Gang. Off the Ladies Night album, 1980. Hit number, I wanna say seven. Um, so uh, we're going for lemon juice, which means I need to cut a lemon. Which again, I thought I was done. Uh, this is a huge lemon. It says three tablespoons of lemon juice. My favorite spice cumin. Yes, it's really, I'm so used to it and stuff in Puerto Rican cooking. Uh, bye Danny, thanks for coming by. See ya in the AM. Okay, so we've got our lemon, and we got our lemon juicer. It's got a lot of lemon, but uh, assuming it's just, just three tablespoons. So uh, it should be okay. Uh, cumin, cumin goes back. Lemon. You call that a knife? I call that a knife. Okay, here we go. Hoping for three tablespoons on this. Don't know exactly, but I don't think it really matters that damn much. Okay, squeeze. Belly dance while you cook. All right. Lemon half number one. Bank shot. Lemon half number two. This is a big ass lemon. These are like mutant lemons. You almost need the orange juicer for this one. No. Okay, that's your upper body workout. We've got our Nautilus equipment, Nautilus kitchen equipment right here. Okay, lemon juice in. I did take a picture, didn't I? Yes, I did. Uh, tablespoons of tahini paste. I bought tahini paste, used it the other day. Still got some more of that uh, sesame. I flipped the lemon meat side up. Oh, but this thing is built for the other thing. I think. I'm gonna have to think about that. That might make sense. Never really thought about that. Something to ponder. Uh, okay, lemon, tahini, tahini, two te teaspoons, tablespoons, two tablespoons of tahini paste. Which is uh, sesame, in case you did not know. I'll read that in a second here. Uh, we always give your lemon a firm roll on the chopping board prior to cutting and producing. Yes, also, um, I should have done that. Also, uh, to put it in the microwave for about 10 seconds um, ma somehow magically helps uh, get more juice out of the lemon. But yes, you are correct, sir. I neglected to do that. Let go. Okay, one more. Tablespoon. Let go. I have the same juicer. Ah! Yeah, I went, I did the whole first whatever of this challenge when I had lemons, I freaked out. I was thinking, you know, do I need a little cheesecloth to put around it? Because I was so sick of cooking out the seeds of things. 
Um, and then I saw that and I went, ah, oh, the answer to my prayers. Hello. Ah, hi. Hi. Hi, hi. Sorry, I'm getting things back. I'm getting to you later. You're not, uh... Yeah, I am. Okay. I'm still here. Hi, husband just got home. Hey, bad babe, thank you for the like. Um, we are mixing up our chickpeas and, uh, yogurt and lemons and salt and pepper and all that good stuff. Sounds yummy. Yes, and we're adding a pinch of salt. Oh, we already added salt, but we'll add another pinch of salt. Oh, oh, that's my, um, timer. Hello, folks. Mm, that's the husband. Okay. Timer, timer, timer is done. So, uh, out. Oh, I need oven mitts. To take out my... Da! In my face. So these are now our toasted pita chips. Which are going to sit on the stove. Pita chips? Now? Chips. Yes, now they are chips. They have become chips. They have transformed a uh, whisk. Whisk is this. Okay, you want a whisk? I'll get you a whisk. <laughs> Diana says hello. Oh, you are awake now. Yeah, just feel so good. The timing is ticking off. Which is very upsetting. Uh, you know, while, I, while this does this, this, this can sit here. This part can sit here. Um, it's been not as long as it needs to be, but uh, long enough um, for this uh, resting here. And did you tell him you got dinner invite in Scotland, did you? Yes, we got a dinner uh, invite in Scotland. I would love to go to Scotland. Faith in Bigorra, that is good news. Hootman, Hootman. Okay, so we've whisked you up. And I'm gonna give that another taste. Here, let me wash this off. It's got a long distance seed. Long distance seed? Yeah, they bounced all the way up here. Oh. Okay, we give it a taste. Uh, Derek says hello. Hi, Derek. Hmm. Quite good. Very good. Yogurt makes it better. Okay, I'm just gonna sit. Now I'm gonna move on to uh, the magic. Oh, let me just sneak in there real quick. Have a nice. Okay, I'm getting rid of the knife here. Oh, Jane style. And now uh -huh. um, the magic. In this and this, we're going to make our kibbe, our kibbe thingy. So this kind of scares me. Um, oil skillet. Okay, I'm gonna oil skillet. Oh, I see. <coughs> um, this is our done stick. It seems kind of obvious. I just wasn't thinking. Because it's thinking uh, it recommends a baking dish, but I'm using the skillet and I'm hoping that's okay. Uh, here, I can use this. Okay, thankfully it's non stick. I hope that helps. Okay. Downstairs. Really? That's interesting. Because I was banging something earlier. Uh, okay, this is the time. Did you get that bulb thing fixed? Oh my goodness, yes, I did. <laughs> it turned out it was um, not the bulb. I mean, the bulb was busted. Oh, oh, the potato thing worked great. Thanks again for that. I had found that uh, out before um, and I totally forgotten. And thanks for remembering. And the, the, the potato thing got it out and then um, had to have the handyman come because it turned out it was the switch was honked up. So now we're making little balls with the uh, meat. They don't have to be perfectly round, but once they're round, I'm gonna put this down. I need to do, do a quick back and forth with the water here. Good 
we're gonna have to take pictures. Um, thank you for the restream. Why that? Why that? Uh, so this, the meatball, and then the meatball gets smashy, smashed into the bottom, like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we uh, lather, rinse, repeat with the rest of this. Uh, good day. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Katya, thank you for the like and the restream. So we're making the balls, and then we're smashing them down, and then placing them at the bottom, and then grabbing another handful, and making a ball. I'm sorry I don't know any more Arabic than Assalamu alaikum. But Assalamu alaikum to you. And we smash, and then we put it down at the bottom, and then... We have to spend more time with the Moroccan pavilion, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, que cocina, uh, pelotudo. Uh, estoy cocinando, se llama kibe, uh, pero un tipo de, ese, uh, carne de, eh, no veja. Um, pero eh, va a ser como un bizcocho, con un pastel, pero de carne. It's from Syria. It's a uh, kibe bin, I forgot the last word. My hands are messed up. Um, but also, so the, the bottom is going to be uh, the meat, which is with bulgur wheat, the lamb meat. Um, wow, I forgot to say lamb meat. And we have to fill up every available space on the bottom. Oh, wait a minute, I'm only using half of this, right? Yes. Uh, oh, boy. Okay, that's a horse of a different color. No pun intended. Uh, Are you oh, making horse meat? No, I'm not making horse meat, but I do need to spread this out more. That little frying pan there, is that, uh, should that be clean? Uh, that yes, it can be cleaned. I just need to cool it down, but if it's cool now. Uh, okay, we've got an issue that um, I only need to use half of this. So I'm spreading it out so it covers the bottom of the pan. Because again, I used half of the meat recipe. Half, uh, half of the recipe because it I didn't have enough uh, people to eat that much food so I'm hoping this spreads out it's gonna be a thin cake I guess yes it's gonna be on catch also so um, look for that also on the blog at clickyland.com you can follow on Facebook uh, on Twitter on Instagram on Pinterest and on YouTube and the videos will be linked also uh, on the blog, which is goes up every Wednesday, so that is tomorrow. So you'll see uh, links to the pictures and recipes and stuff. Uh, think. Okay, so now that we have level one, uh, hi, looking good, thank you. Okay, we flatten that out there. So now we take the meat mixture here that we made and put that as a layer, as layer number two. This is the filling that has more lamb and onions and the Baharat spice mix and the pine nuts and grated onion, or the, the diced onion rather, which is softened. So we're making a layer of that. Oh my God, I'm so sorry about the time. Yeah. Okay. And this goes in the sink. And we take a picture of you. Now we have some, you know, different kind of tap dancing to do afterwards. I thought I'd be making the chickpea dish while this cooked in the oven. As it turned out, um, didn't have to do that. Okay, so now I'm making the very flattened meatballs to go on the top. With the second half of the meat. Okay, flat, very flat. Has to cover the entire thing. Again, I'm only using half of the meat. So actually there should be like three pounds of meat. And I'm not using three pounds of meat because we don't have that many people. 
Well, we have two people, and I have leftovers for tomorrow and the next day for lunch, and that's gonna have to do. Okay. Wow. Wowie wow wow. As a <coughs> wowie wow wow. Like best Christopher Walken impression. It's not spreading enough. This is tricky. This is tricky. Yeah. Tricky. This is this is what happens when you do half the recipe. It doesn't cover the entire top. Oopsie. Oops, sounds delicious. You started early, you should have been on time, but you talk and talk and talk. Yeah, that's what I do. Smaller pan if you do half. Yeah, you'd think, wouldn't you? Um, I thought, I mean, from the pictures, it looked like their thing was really big. So I thought my skillet would work. Um, it didn't completely. I mean, I could try to make, the, I'm trying to make this thinner. So it covers the top more. Almost, but not completely. Come on. Uh, trying to spread it out as much as I can. And it has to be firm, too. So there's bold spots here. There are obvious bold spots, but I'm gonna have to just live with that. You so helpful. Uh, Martin, uh, Martin, is that right? Thank you for the like. Okay, I'm spreading this out, trying to spread this out and push it down. Okay, there's like I said, bold spot, but that's just the way it's gonna be. Okay, hands. In my defense on the talking thing, it was it, it took forever than me to, to brown, which uh, took uh, way more time than I thought. Okay, so we're gonna brush this with olive oil. Um, soy que soy trolazo y me siento en el pinoco. Tremendo. Okay, we're gonna brush it with olive oil. And, uh, oh, picture. And all the oil. Okay, and spread you out. And then, uh, make a small hole in the middle of your finger. Thusly. Uh, and uh, ready to go in the oven for 25 minutes. Here we go. Twenty-five. Oh, so, um, that's the cooking. Uh, we have our chickpeas here, which are going to go be served uh, on top of the toasted um, uh, uh, pitas, and that's going to be on the side with the um, kibe kibe bil sunny. Keep it busy, I can't. Uh, which is the minced lamb with bulgur of wheat, which I did half and it didn't really cover, and I was afraid that, that would happen, and it happened, and I don't, you know, I did have a, a gauge as to what size, uh, you know, cake pan. And my other option would have been this. And you tell me how that, those three layers would have fit on there. So that wouldn't work either. So I'm just saying. I, I only I had I had fewer options. 
in, uh, in terms of receptacles. So you, I did not need. Um, you, we do not need. You can go back. So thirsty. What are we talking? Uh, nothing. Okay. Um, where's my water? Over here. Anytime I have to bake something, anything has to go in the oven or like a stew has to cook for a long time, I'm always in this predicament. And what do I do while I wait? Sometimes I do another dish, but I didn't know the other thing would take so long. So, um, you can watch me clean. Yeah, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Some things will never change. This is when you wish you had a fast forward button on live, live, live uh, video. Unfortunately, that is not reality. Uh, we would have made the same mistake. It's okay. Thank you, Lavender Femchi. Because I didn't know. I'm seeing the thing, and, and she's showing a 12 inch cake pan. And, uh, and I'm thinking, well, it'll be shallower. But I saw that recipe and I saw the, the amount of meat and I said, that can't be right. That's three pounds of meat. So I said, as it was, I'm doing a pound and a half of meat. You can keep your company with your... You keep us company with your shirt? Quit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's a... Uh... Sometimes y'all is the only socializing I get, so I very much look forward to spending time with y'all. So that's where the Miami accent comes in. People say Miami doesn't have an accent, and it most seriously has an accent. No matter where your ethnic background is, I mean, it's going to be a little bit of what your ethnic background is. Um, but uh, you're going to adopt uh, that of everyone else. So it's a little bit Cuban. It's a little bit, you know, Yiddish. It's a little bit New York. But it's also a little bit Southern. So, we say y'all. Even if you're in, like, Cuban, you wind up saying y'all. Even though you don't really notice it. Um, and, uh, you end things with the word, hey, 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 Mang. Hey, Mang. M-A-N-G, Mang. Oh, yeah, Mang. And uh, then there's the uh, the grammar-destroying one called, um, uh, what people say, supposedly, which is not a word. Which drives me crazy. En que nadie me ha disfrutado. Se en que nadie me he disfrutado. Seguro me voy a quedar para ver su local. And Lester, me gusto mucho. Uh, thank you, Derek. Um, I'm taking a wild guess that that was a run through Google Translate. Just because uh, it said that seems to happen when I uh, move things back and forth across there. It, you know, grammar and same text gets a little weird. In fact, I was um, listening to uh, what music was I listening to? Um, uh, oh, uh, the Buena Vista Social Club, uh, which is Cuban. And they're singing a song, and it's very, you know, traditional, and I've heard this kind of thing a million times growing up. And, uh, but they're saying, oh, dale candela. You know, thinking, oh, you know, that's if you're, you know, want to give enthusiasm, you know, or if you're spanking a child, you know, they're something, you know, dale candela. And I was thinking, yeah, but what does candela actually mean? And I ran it through and it said candle. I said, that's not candle. Candle is vela. So I don't know what candela is. I thought candela was kindling, but that's not, that's leña. So I don't know exactly what candela means. It's a, maybe it's just a word that Cubans and Puerto Ricans use. To denote the, the violent enthusiasm. Vigor. I do not know. Uh, okay, I'm cleaning the counter. 
I'm cleaning the counters because I have the time to do that. I know it's very exciting to watch. We know you have a choice of programming. We thank you for choosing Clippy Land. As you, get, as you, you accompany us to our final destination of food. It's our belly dance oasis. You know, speaking of belly dancing, uh, at D Disney, at the uh, Moroccan Pavilion, they have a rather nice Moroccan restaurant. They have two now. I haven't tried the second one, now that I think about it. But uh, the, the main one, you have this big dinner, and you know, before you, before you finish your meal at some point, there will be belly dancing. Which is nice. Um, but it's Disney, so it's very odd that they go out and, into the audience and bring up children and teach them to belly dance. Which strikes me as strange. I mean, for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the origin of belly dancing. So, who knows? Uh, looks like granite. What do you use to clean all wipes? Yeah, um, these Clorox disinfecting wipes. Um, yes, it is granite. Uh, and thankfully, um, this is held up. Because we had a granite countertop for our place in Columbus. And um, uh, it was good, except then it started to do the little holes thing, and it had to be, you know, we moved before we had to resurface it. Uh, sit back for lawyer, enjoy your flight, and if you can do anything to enhance your journey, please do not hesitate to ask. Yes. Anybody see all that jazz? Uh, granite countertop. Yes. Yes, that was nice. Um, I was really glad that, uh, I mean, this is not what these kitchens look like in the original version of these uh, units. Um, we've seen those and that was not attractive. So whoever did the uh, remodel, bonus. The internet appreciates you and, and so do I. So, uh, can you believe the internet? I mean, I mean, I realized just this past November that I've been on the internet for 20 years. That kind of blew my mind. The same way that uh, the the different generations thing. Um, there's like baby boomers, and then there's the uh, um, Gen Xers, and then there was going to be Gen Y, but they renamed the Millennials. So they're Millennials. Uh, but those end, they start in 1980, but there's a debate where it ends. I say it ends in um, 1994. They're 15 years. That's, that's the rule. Unless for baby boomers, it's 15 years. Um, so the ones born after 1994, some people are saying 98, um, or another generation, someone gave them a name now, called them Founders. Um, I adore your kitchen. Thank you. You're thinking Formica in your house. Um, is Formica like better now? Because uh, Formica is what, oh, oh, you were thinking what was Formica. Yes, it was Formica. It was bad 70s Formica. Um, so, yeah, when I see other units for sale, we look at the pictures and we're like, hey, fly friends, thank you for liking the restream. Okay, now we have a clean countertop. I'm gonna double clean it. OCD in full effect mode. But anyway, I'm thinking, um, so if these founders, the post-millennial generation uh, that are born between 19, I say 95, they might say 98, and 2010 are founders, then that means we have yet another generation born since 2010 that doesn't have any kind of name because of course they're, you know, in diapers. At Meerkat, thank you for the like. Clean, clean, clean. Uh, and then we will be plating once it comes out of the oven, but we are waiting. We are waiting to entertain me. Entertain me, I can juggle. We have to dress the chickpeas, which are here. Sorry about the rocking. We have pine nuts that we roasted and we have cilantro that we chopped. So that's gonna be there. 
You know, theoretically, I could play it right here. I usually do it back there. Ay, 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 ay. Que cansancio. How was your day? People, my goodness. So, um, I need to find, make contact with somebody. Uh, I'm just thinking about phase two of this whole project. Because after I hit Zimbabwe, and we do maybe Puerto Rico and a vacation, or uh, I want to do some territories afterwards. Oops, upside your head. Said, oops, upside your head. Yeah, you know, the Gap Band just got, um, uh, had to get a songwriting credit on Uptown Funk because, you know, that. Um, so now Charlie Wilson gets money. Charlie Wilson was homeless for a while. Charlie Wilson will not be homeless again, thanks to that song. Um, uh,. Oh, uh, phase two. So I want to do continents, uh, the other um, territories of the world that are not UN member states. But you'll see, we've covered most of the world, and by the time we hit Zimbabwe, we'll have done every UN member state. However, that leaves a few things out, uh, and I want to cover them. But if I try to do like every territory, uh, then you get like island, 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 British island, Dutch island, French island, French island, uh, British island, uh, all the way around the world, and I'd get sick of, you know, fish and coconut and spam. Because that happens. If anyone suffered through part A of uh, the S, this is the last letter S. This is the nation number 169. Uh, we started six months ago. Six months ago. And on Meerkat. Six months ago, we started with St. Kitts and Nevis. So that was nation number 144. And now we're in our nation number 169. So they're all letter S countries. So what we're missing that I want to cover is uh, several. One of them is Western Sahara, which is right there, which uh, Morocco claims um, is part of southern Morocco, and Mauritania claims it, and Algeria has claimed a part of it, but they, um, there's a big dramatic issue. But they speak Spanish there. Uh, across a crowded dance floor through a maze of dancing people. I, that, I'm thinking that song, but now I'm with the belly dancing in my ear. I know the song. I know that song. The maze of dancing. Oh, see, oh, eye to eye contact. Eye to eye contact. Very good. Good one, Derek. You know your disco. Um, Scotland. Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, Scotland, Wales, but I'm going to do those, you know, one night each. You know, we'll put Wales and Northern Ireland together in one night. I'm sorry. Welsh and Northern Ireland people. But I'll do England and then Scotland and Northern Ireland and Wales um, in three separate nights as part of the UK. So that's going to be the primary Scotland. But fear not um, because phase two, after I do the territories, is going to be um, there's going to be a part of it that's going to be on Meerkat and it's going to be a part of it's going to be on Periscope. I'm gonna go around, definitely gonna go around the world one more time, so you can see from A to whatever, till the time I drop dead. Um, one night. And then a second night um, is going to be uh, 50 states. Cause it's the US and it's a thing that can be done. And the third night is gonna be like a grab bag. I want your apron autograph. You are so nice, Anne-Marie. Um, the como se dice, uh, third night. Oh yes, uh, random cuisines. It's gonna be like a grab bag. So this way I can focus on a cuisine of a certain place that didn't get enough time to be focused on when I just covered a country in one night. So there can be a different uh, kind of French cuisine or Italian cuisine or a little more on Scottish cuisine if you want. And it doesn't have to be alphabetical. Hey, Justin, how are you doing? I'm sitting here waiting for my kibbe uh, to bake in the oven. Uh, which should be another six minutes um, or so. So uh, that's what's happening. Um, oh, and we have our chickpeas right here uh, that are just gonna get dressed and put together and that's gonna be dinner. But I s was slow and I talked and this happened, so dinner's late. But I'm talking about what I'm thinking about doing for phase two um, after I hit Zimbabwe in July. Um, vacation, big Puerto Rico hoedown, and then uh, some territories. So I'm thinking Western Sahara, as I pointed out there, and each of these things is politically sensitive. 
Um, thank you for the like, Dawson. Uh, you got your Palestine, which, uh, you know, has never been a problem about that, ever. Um, the, uh, um, thinking, you know, if I wanted to, uh, you know, like Tibet, but again, that, you know, controversial. Um, Vatican City, which is not really a cuisine, it's, you know, making communion wafers, but I can make like a Roman dish. Did you enjoy the cold front that came through? Yes, I was in Orlando, I was in Disney, and, um, Sunday, I jogged in the morning around Bay Lake, where there's no path, so I was like in the grass, running through potholes and divots, uh, and it was like 36 degrees in my face, which was fantastic. I had my like cold weather gear. I was great. It's ladies' night, or is it raining men? Is it ladies' night or raining men? Justin, I mean Derek. But in general, um. I think the line you gave me, I think, was from Contact. Cross the ground through a maze of potatoes. Um, it's Raining Man, yes, obviously. Ladies Night, yes, both great songs, three years apart. Um, I know too much about this. Um, so those are the biggies, uh, territory-wise. Oh, yes, but then there's like uh, French, Gu French Guiana here, which is part of France. Here from Uruguay. Sign in, in with the globe. Yes, indeed, your Uruguay coming up um, in I think June. Uruguay, Uruguay, Montevideo. Ahí se ve ahí mismo. Uruguay, greetings. Hello. Uh, Cliffy, Jonathan was at Disney at the same time. Really? That's funny. Ha! Huh. Strange. What was he streaming? I didn't see anyone streaming, but the the the, the internet is so, you know, weird at. Um, at Disney, they're not surprised anyone, you know, has any battery life left. But there's, um, these various territories, and I could do a couple, or I could do a bunch. Um, I'm not really sure. Because, like, you know, do you really want to do the Faroe Islands, you know, up here? Um, uh, that's all up in the air, but then after I do that, that way I can focus. So I can do Szechuan one night, I can randomly do, you know, it's a part of Mexican, cuisine and just focus on a certain, you know, part of a country, not alphabetically, a third night. So one night, going back around the world, one night, no, he didn't stream, ah, alas. Um, one night going around the world again, one night doing the 50 states, and one night, you know, random cuisine of the world uh, in depth in one night. And uh, some on Meerkat and some on Periscope. So I'm gonna try giving that Periscope a thing. Um, not that I love Periscope, but A, it's different people, uh, sort of, and also I can be in landscape mode, which would be really nice because it looks better on YouTube. And I'm trying to get people to go to my YouTube channel and, you know, click and see an ad and whatever so I can make a couple pennies. So I'll feel better about this. It'll be cool if you do countries that are not well known. Um, yes, because I've already done one, I will have done 193 UN member states. There's only, oh, one, uh, two UN observer states which is Vatican City and Palestine. And then there's um, also Kosovo, which is Serbia, as it's part of Serbia. They're working on getting all their stuff to ducks in a row so they can be an independent, recognized country by Serbia and everyone else. But that's all up in the air. Who knows when that's gonna happen? But we'll count Kosovo as one of those sort of disputed lands. But there are so many others, like, you know, Tibet, or do you want to say Hong Kong is a separate thing, or Macau is a separate thing? Um, you know, that gets all weird and dicey. Um, so, because uh, like I said, I don't want to do every territory, because clearly with putting ads in your videos. Uh, I'm not putting ads in my videos, I'm just on YouTube, just the, um, that usual thing. Oh, and Marie, you've been watching the YouTube, 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 YouTube channel, thank you very much. Um, and I just have the, um, the autoplay ads or the little pop-up ads on YouTube. That's it. Um, uh, I mean, it'd be nice to have something that could, you know, help fund this project. Or uh, in some way. Not in a big way. Just in a little way. So I, I filled out the forms for the YouTube whatever thingy to have, um, uh, you know, like a GoFundMe kind of thing on there. Uh, Derek says, I've subscribed to YouTube, but anytime I use Periscope, it drops out more often than it works. Yeah, the, the, I was on um, David Dorian's feed. Hey, Kenneth, I see you there. How you doing? Um, 
the uh, and I don't know if it was like the people's different devices, but um, it didn't look so good. But it was nice that it could be horizontal, and the Apple TV app is nice. Where you know, just sitting there on the TV. Oh, you got pennies for YouTube. Okay, I'll try it out. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you just see an ad for like a second and skip it, you know, that's a couple pennies. I figured in 30 years I can get a check for hundred dollars. Yes, I mean on YouTube. When I was YouTubing, someone click bombed me and got my AdSense account disabled. Oh dear, that's not nice. Someone bombed me. Uh, oh, I think, yeah, I know what you mean. That's really, really bad. Sorry that happened to you. Yeah, um, I've been on both ends of the advertising thing with that. And uh, when first time I, I went with internet advertising, I went, okay, I'll pay for this number of clicks. And then suddenly, like in a day, that rip, your budget is gone. And I'm thinking, I didn't get a single customer. And allegedly, like a million clicks. And it was like somebody... So, it's a big old scam. Mm. But Google, Google makes the money off it. Okay, thumbs up. Yay. For this, I do need my oven mitt so I do not burn my hands off. And I'll give you my special oven mitt, too. See? It's a globe. I'm gonna do this here. I'm not gonna do it there. I'm gonna do it here. We're gonna do it live! You know, I had that other dish, I could have done that. Now that I look in the oven, in the in the pantry, I see it. Okay. Do these one at a time. Here goes nothing. Fat lot of nothing. Oven mitt. Okay. Mm. She look like that. So we slice it like a cake. Hot. Do not forget that it is hot. You know what? Speaking of cake. Didn't I? Yes, I did. We used to call our wedding cake. You got these with our wedding cake, so might as well use them. Be very careful, don't want to hit the nonstick. I'm not touching the bottom of the pan, which is probably a problem. Okay. No, I did not take a picture of this. I will take a picture. Looks good. I hope it tastes good. I sampled some of it before, I think. Okay. And I don't think he's going to want a piece that big. Ow! Oh! Stupid. Dumb. Okay. I'm gonna be this for leftovers for days. Okay. There's no way this can come out without making a mess. And I need the oven mitt again so I don't burn my hand. Okay. One of these, at least one of these, is gonna look like poop. Utensils, thank you. Um, the taste. Uh, yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Um, I mean, not that I can do much about it, but I get an idea. Yummy. 
Mmm, that is yummy. Uh, I got my friend Christian sliding door today. My friend closed it. Oh, that's not good. That's very bad. I had, um, when I was going to Orlando just the other day, I put my, um, I was trying to deal with the, um, safety belt. And the door was jammed in there, and I got my finger jammed in the door. Thankfully, it did not do anything harmful. Because that would have been very, very bad. Uh, TNT, me. What the hell? Oh, what? TNT to. at greedy scotsman.uk. We're okay. Ow, but dang it. It's just. Having to remember to not hit the oh well that one kind of came apart. Yeah, it looks like poo. And I'm gonna have to clean the counter again. Yay! Oh boy, these are not. These ends do not look attractive. It's looking like a mound of ground beef. This one is not for the cameras. The other one looked better. Okay, you're gonna sit there for a minute. Uh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. So you, and now we are gonna get some pita chips here. Put them at the bottom of this. And pita chips on the bottom of that. Four, that's good. And spoon on. Spoon would be helpful for spooning, wouldn't it? The chickpeas on top of the chips. Uh, dee, dee, dee. I have to kiss it better. Oh. Okay, this will be leftovers also. And we're going to dress it with the pine nuts. And the cilantro. OMG, oh, look, that was funny squinting at the screen. I do that too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's gonna be for leftovers also. And the uh, additional chips go on top. So, we have our dinner. So, I'm gonna put it over there, I'm gonna take a picture, I'm gonna take you over. But I need to wash my hands. Okay, you're the one who's gonna be chosen. Step forward. Not demurely. Give me sexy. Give me sexy. Give me, give me, I want to be eaten. Give me lost, give me, give me kibbe. Okay. Yay! No, it's 1.25 a.m. UK time. I need a letter from you to get my boss to explain why I'm gonna be late this morning. You are so funny. Uh, okay, here we go. This is our, uh, okay, we have our fata, our fate, which is a pita with chickpeas and yogurt, uh, and our kibbe bin sirah, uh, kibbe bin sirah, which is the minced lamb with bulgur wheat, and here's the better looking one over here, is her, her better looking sister, right over there. So that's it, that's night, that Syria screen froze, oh no. Um, that's it. That's night three of Syria. That does it for the letter S. Six months we've been doing the letter S and um, again, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the situation in Syria, a horrible, tragic situation. And if you can find it in your heart, go to Doctors Without Borders or the International Rescue Committee. They're both great vetted um, organizations. They're doing great work around the world and they're helping with the refugee situation. So if you have a couple bucks, you know, just throw it their way. Um, a little bit goes a long way. So thanks for coming by. Uh, Tachita, thank you for the like and the restream. Hello, we're gonna eat my dinner. But uh, join us next week 
for Tajikistan. So we're going to be doing Central Asia, a whole bunch of stands. Uh, we've already done a few, but we're going to do the rest of them in quick succession. So Tajikistan next week, look for it uh, probably on Friday. And then of course, definitely on Tuesday. So, and then who knows, there might be a third night of Tajikistan. Who knows, maybe it's really great. We'll find out. Thank you so much for coming by. Love you guys. You're great. Catch you next time. Remember, follow here on Meerkat, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, and on YouTube. Subscribe. So thanks. Catch you later. Gotta eat. It's late. Bye.